butterflies it's your girl Pam and today I want to talk about your mindset um I went and did something that was so fabulous this week and as I was doing it I'm gonna tell y'all about it give me a second but as I was actually completing it I realized that my mindset had been for so long that I should not be doing this and I want to get into that just a little bit why did I feel like I was not deserving of paying off my debt so if you've ever thought that way stay tuned <laughs> Right, butterflies let's jump in this week I was so excited I got some extra money and you know we've we've talked about what I did with my taxes I paid off all of my credit card debt and so the next big thing was going to be my truck I have a 2017 Kia Sorento and I, I want to pay for it. <laughs> I want to pay for it. I don't want to pay for it monthly anymore I am I'm just over it there's no other way to put it I'm just over it and so when I got some extra money this week I paid just towards my principal $800 oh my god thank you I was so excited I was I was ecstatic um I also to my credit yay I also ended up paying um, $225 toward my HOA fee. Now, I think I mentioned in one of my other videos, I knew that I owed this money. I didn't want to pay this money because I'm on the board and I saw how many other people <laughs> were not paying. I realized that that had nothing to do with me. My obligation was to pay it. We only have to pay $250 a year. Mine was significantly lower than a lot of my counterparts, my neighbors, and I, I got hit with the, I don't care, I could be doing something else with my money, but trying to be a better person, trying to realize that their negligence has nothing to do with me, that was what I owed, so I owed $425, I paid $200 earlier, and then I paid the balance, which is $225. Now, um, we pay it in April and in July. So there'll be another one in April of $125. I'll just add that into my budget and go ahead and take care of that so that I don't have to worry about it anymore. So I was so excited, y'all. But at the same time, I felt myself scared to hit the button on either one of them, the $225 or the $800, because... For me, I got like in this rat race of thinking that I would never ever be able to get myself out of debt. My mother always taught me to pay your bills on time. Um, credit was a part of our household. Um, she made it quite clear that she was proud of the fact that she had, and I don't even know if they did credit scores back then. but. You know that she was able to go and get a car and whatever else she wanted if she needed it and so she instilled those things into me and unfortunately i instilled those into the girls um and both of them honestly unraveled like a present on christmas day they just it's fine when the going is good it is ridiculously horribly oh, it, it's just so stressful when things get out of whack you lose a job you get a divorce um your child gets sick I, I mean anything a car breakdown any of these things could be like you're good one month and then the next month you're not and i mentioned i have not been the best saver um in my life um i'll start off good and by july somehow and i am determined by this july i'm not going to do that 
So if I can just get through this one year, I know that it is possible. But somehow, and it doesn't even have to be a big emergency, y'all. But once that emergency takes place, I go and I go and I dip and I dip and I, it just never ends. And then I look up and honestly, I don't have a whole lot saved at, at all. I don't, you know, I, I have this all or nothing mentality. And once the, the money is gone um, or it's dwindling, then I just say, oh, never mind. You know, I hope God takes care of me. And he always has. Don't get me wrong. He always has. But I don't like that anxiety of not having um, something that makes me feel secure. So I am on a mission to have $5,000 saved by the end of the year. And yes, y'all, this has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with Dave Ramsey. These are my own personal goals. I want to have $5,000 saved by the end of the year. And I want to have 50 pounds off by the end of the year. Um, and I want to pay at least $5,000 toward my truck. That's extra in addition to my regular payment now um i hope to do more than five thousand but you know i don't know i owe about twenty two thousand dollars left on my truck and you know i know that i didn't get a good deal i know that you know the interest rate is ridiculous and so i'm really trying to throw everything i can in addition to me making those other goals as far as savings is concerned that is something that I personally want to do for myself to make me feel secure. So, with that said, um, over at Ditching the Debt, I kind of was asking, and I think I asked on the last um, on the last video, and a lot of you agree that you know five thousand, excuse me, one thousand dollars was not something that made you feel comfortable. So, this is why this kind of stems from this, but also. The mentality of not understanding that it doesn't matter that I'm a single mom of three. It doesn't matter what my economical status is. It doesn't matter what my race is. Um, I can be debt free if I put the work in. If I keep my mindset focused on what I want to do. And sometimes those things, those factors that I just mentioned can make you feel as though you can't do something. You know what I'm saying? When I first went through Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University, I told you that um, Habitat had paid for it. And in all honesty, I went through it because they told me to go through it. I never thought in a million years that I could be debt free. Honestly, y'all, 10 years ago, I could have been debt free. But, or by now, I could have been debt free if I would have done this 10, 12 years ago. But I, I just did not. I, I just thought, oh, okay, this is nice. I'll take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But I did not buy into it because I did not think that he was talking to me. You know, I had three small kids under 10. And I, I, I didn't know how I was going to pay anything. I didn't know how I was going to make it. And so for somebody to say to put something over the side or pay anything extra on anything that I had was, oh my gosh, it, it was mind blowing. So I didn't have anything extra. So he couldn't be talking to me. But if you just crunch down just for a little bit, you can live like no one else as you're going through this. And so later on, you can live and give like no one else. And so I just want to encourage all of you as you're going through your debt journey, focus on the end result. Now, sometimes the end result is too big. I get it. You know, I still have my truck, $22,000. I still have my um, $126,000 is more than that now of student loans. 
And even though my house is almost paid, not almost paid for, but because I don't have interest, that's still 50 something thousand dollars left on my loan that I have to pay. So yeah, it looks overwhelming. As a distant focus, I want you to think about that. I want you to see yourself going to um, the Dave Ramsey show and screaming I'm debt free. I'm debt free! I can't wait to say it. Honestly, I practice. I cannot wait. So have that in your head. Know that it is possible. Um, but at the same time, have little goals. Like my credit card, I do better with sitting out a chunk of money honestly, versus them making smaller payments. I just do, I don't like doing it because I, I, I want to play with the money. Let's just be honest. I want to buy this and do this and get this. And, but as long as I'm focused, as long as I have my, you know, my game plan, then I can go ahead and, you know, pay off three credit cards. I did. And I was okay with that. And now my next goal is to tackle this truck. I just need to get it paid for and however that looks and however long it takes i know that it will not take me the full gamut of the the the, the months that they gave me you know they got and i don't know if y'all know that when we go in and we so-called negotiate um they'll give you whatever payment you want because they stretch out the payments and so because they stretched out my payments, of course, I'm going to be paying more interest because that's every month. So what I want to do is go ahead and pay extra towards my principal um, at the beginning of the month. I don't do anything except for send my payment. And so I know that, you know, two thirds of that is going to go to, to my principal and then one third is going to my interest. The more I pay on that principal, the less will go to interest the more will go to the principal so as i continue to you know pay on this principal more and more of my regular payment will be going to my principal and less to my interest but i've got to make additional payments where literally i go into their site i type in you know the button that says to apply to principal only and then i put the amount in there now there are some other components that of money that comes in um, not with my regular paycheck. So whatever I'm going to send from my regular paycheck, because you got to remember, I've got the, um, I used to pay like 60 something dollars to one Capital One. I paid 50 something dollars to another Capital One. And then I had $25 going to, um, going to, Home Depot. So because of that, I have some extra money coming from that snowball that now I can go ahead and apply toward my car note. Now, with that said, I have another set of money that I can't count on. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, then, you know, it is what it is. But if I get it, then I'm going to apply it directly to my principal. My mindset has to change. I am worthy of being debt free. I am worthy of being debt free. I must get that in my mind. I must instill that in my mind so therefore I can break this generational curse of being in debt. Um, both of my girls, I, they got a credit card. One, I kind of forced on it on Brie. I'm being honest. I was like, you need to build your credit. You know, you're going to move out soon. And I, I, I forced her to get a credit card. And it got out of hand. And now, you know, she's rebuilding her credit. I had to apologize to my kid because I kind of caused this. You know, I did for her what my mom did for me. But when you know better, you do better. So now... I'm going, she's, you know, talking about moving out on her own and I'm going to sit with her with every dollar and we're going to go ahead and do a budget for her. Um, and she has a credit card, um, but 
nobody told me that you are only supposed to spend 30% of what your credit line was. Nobody told me. So guess what? Since nobody told me if I had a $2,000 credit limit, I spent $2,000. I, I didn't know. Nobody told me. So, you know, I want them to be responsible with their um, money matters. I want them to be responsible so that they don't feel that chokehold that I was talking about in my video with um, the, the missing step of zero <laughs> because there is a baby step zero, you know, when the walls are closing down on you, when you don't have your, you know, your house note called up, you don't have your, um, your, your electricity or your, your car or everything is behind your four walls are behind. It feels like a chokehold. So, so that I don't continuously experience that I want to be in a position where I don't have to worry about that anymore. So I think some of the things that I want you to take away from this is that you set yourself up so that you don't set yourself up for failure. You be proactive. So some of the key things that I think you should have. I really think you should have sinking funds. Now, I told you guys I only have two now. People love multiple ones. I just needed two. Shit happens, and shit happens honestly was a pun on things that come around, not necessarily every month, but I know that they're coming. Whether it's buying toilet paper, that's where the shit happens came from. Um, whether it's buying toilet paper by the case, or if it is a bill that not, may not necessarily come around, like going to get school clothes for Janae. So I have to have a, a little chunk of money set over to the side for that, okay? And then the other one is called rainy day. Now, these may be emergencies, but they're small emergencies. If I get a, a hole in my tire, then I can go to that versus going to my emergency fund. Okay, just for me personally, I'm not encouraging anybody else to go, you know, against what they believe. But me personally, I felt like I needed more than a thousand. So I go ahead and make sure that I have more than a thousand in my emergency fund. Um, the other thing that I make sure that I do is have a Christmas fund. Christmas is going to come every single year. If that's something that you celebrate, you know, that little baby, I told y'all he has taken over Prime. He has probably his own Prime account <laughs> at Amazon. I don't know what happened. They were coming every day at one point, and I'm like, okay, let's slow your roll. He literally is five days old. But, you know, you get excited, whether, you know, it's your kids or your grandkids or just you, you're celebrating yourself. And so with that said, guess what? You have to make better choices. So let me get myself prepared for Christmas. Now, I don't know if $50 a month is going to be enough, y'all. It was more than I saved last year, but I spent more than I had in my Christmas count last year. So I upped it $25. Now, I'll up it until I figure out what that sweet, you know, little sweet nugget is. But until then, you know, I'm just putting $50 over to the side. So, you know, I'm hoping that this will help some of you all. Um, one, change your mindset because it is, you, you really do deserve it. You deserve to be debt free and we can get debt free together. So with that said, I want you guys to go over to Ditching the Debt and I want you guys to become a part of our group on Facebook. Search for Pam Meets World, Ditching the Debt, and I am so excited. Um, we talk about everything. We support each other, and, you know, I, I, I just love it. So, this is going to be our new series called Ditching the Debt, and I want you guys to be a part of it because I want to talk about something financial as much as I possibly can, so therefore, that as I'm talking through what I'm going through, maybe it can help somebody else. So 
If you guys have any questions for me, you know what to do. Leave them below. Please subscribe. I would love to have you a part of the Butterfly family. Um, please make sure you hit your notification bell so it'll let you know the next time that I upload a video. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button. And as always, Butterflies, I love you.